Hallelujah. Come on, let us thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, thank Him. Thank Him, Lord. We thank You and praise You. Yes. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Shall we go to Jeremiah chapter number 1? We'll read from verse number 9 to verse number 10. Jeremiah 1, 9 to 10. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 1, 9 to 10. It still says the same thing. It says, then the Lord reached out his hand. Verse number nine. The Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth or touched my lips and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. I have put my words in your mouth, and today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, just be kind to your neighbor. Give them that smile, your best smile ever. But you have to smile like you can't Give them a for your month and smile. <laughs> and have you noticed since Friday, your wife has been calling you handsome? Huh? We'll never notice that. Amen. Mm. But we just want to thank the Lord for uh, his mercy upon our lives and yours forever. We are covered by the blood of Jesus. And uh, nothing can by any means hurt us. And the angels of God surround us. The favor of God abounds in our lives. And we're trusting that Timudimu to open up more doors in the lives of, your, uh, of his people in this place. And for those whose lives seemed like they have come to a standstill, we rappel and that Timudimu au Kenya go fast lay in our Kenya table engine. But the fella can sound the Huruat. Our Bulele Minyako. Unless the Lord does it, uh, it's not going to happen because we no longer trust in anyone. We trust in him only and he will make it to come to pass. Amen. We'd like to welcome you this morning. Today, how about dinner? Yeah, it's if we have a number of people who are not going to be able to do What's the I mean, the way you Let me tell you, you, I used to love winter. Ne? I used to be a winter person, like thoroughly. How come you get away so sensitive? Oh, because yeah. Electric blanket. Udi Muhammad Ras. Fleece blanket, with him electric blanket. It's got a hack, I will like it. I could care you. And then uh, I'm not kidding you. Electric blanket, fleece blanket, not even a winter sheet, fleece blanket. And then another fleece blanket, one, fleece blanket, two, fleece blanket, three. Yeah. And then. Can I leave the pyjama on? The fleece. (laughs) 
And then, lip. That you are young, which you have fleas. Could have to be some the cutest thing ever. You got to keep Bologna, I feel so. Then you can't leave the house, I feel about it. You can't leave the house. I can't wait to go to, to, to sleep again tonight. I am telling you, Amazon, that's the best sleep ever. The best sleep ever, ever, ever. You must have been working again. Yeah, no, I, I am not. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. Yeah, sir, I'm going to go away to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. But we just saw that the Lord because I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house because I'm going to go to the house. So, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Kenya Samo. But we just want to thank the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, we continue with uh, our, our, our teaching on one word can turn your situation. And today, I want to go, us, uh, go with us uh, through a number of things. Things that I believe influence our words. Things that influence our words. Uh, I think Rikasi denied the fact that some of the things, if not most of the things we say in our Christianity are things we heard from other Christians or from the pulpit. When your kid goes to school for the first time, then they come back there and they swear sometimes. I can't remember. But what it happened, how we were finding out, how we were finding out, how we were finding out, Babanali sport. And then Una Utaka Uli. So we are mostly influenced in our Christian work and not even mostly right in, in, in almost everything. Almost everything we say as Christians, we've heard from the pulpit or from other Christian channels. We get to be taught to talk for the first time according to the word of the Lord. It's, it's a given. We know that very well. Our speech changes when we come to Christianity. So we end up speaking what we have heard from other Christians or speaking what we've heard from the pulpit or from Christian channels and everywhere else. I have uh, noticed this one thing. Uh, it, it happens sometimes you're sleeping and then uh, how to why you hear a song, a worldly song. You hear it whilst you are sleeping. By the time you are it is engraved. Does that ever, ever happen to you? So, yeah, okay, fine. I don't know if you are a little bit of a little bit now, I've noticed that uh, uh, things that are said, they have power to influence us so much, so much. And now we end up even speaking them out. And as a result, I would like to go back to the statement I usually make, that you can never hold God responsible for what your pastor said. Most of our prayer items are not influenced by the word, but they are influenced by the interpretation of the pastor after he reads the word. And this is one thing that we need to be careful of. The reading and the word and the interpretation should be checked equally. The word is almost, almost every time always accurate. They read. I just read from the book of Jeremiah, but everything I'm saying now is not from the book of Jeremiah. And this is where the problem could be. Because this is exactly where you take everything and then you build a case for what I have been saying. Then you go before God and you trust God for things I said, not things he said. So this is what I want us to deal with a little bit. Because then it's going to make you to, 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 to realize that um, the only way God is going to or, or, or God is going to answer your prayers or situations are going to obey your word. It is if the interpretation was according to the word. 
Am, am, I, am I making sense? If the interpretation is according to the word, then you may actually see God answering. But if the interpretation, which is the preaching, does not actually go with the word, then you are not going to see your words have power. You are being influenced by the opinions about them. And this is where we say some people end up being the, the, the products, the opinions that those people around them. Bo, bo, you will not make it. You know that, bo, you're getting a new job. And I've said this many times that, especially coming at the factory, you go there and there is this one man who's been there forever. And then if you talk to that man, you won't love the job anymore. Because he'll tell you, this is the worst company in Zekibatlotzamai. He's been trying to walk out of the company for 30 years, that idiot. He's going nowhere. He's just an angel of the devil to influence you to not like your job. So there are, you know, many things we hear from people who are in where we want to be, which are going to make us to fail exactly where we want to be. Yet they remain there, because somehow everybody understands their own jargon. Are you okay with that? It's like going to a family, you know, when you visit some other families, and then you go like, you, I say, like, why, or, I wonder about people like you. But it's working for them. It's working. They don't see anything wrong. And you go like you. I wonder about people wrong. So you, your life must never be that kind of a life that is going to follow the entire wrong that the lives of other people, including what everybody else says. In the book of Acts 17, the Bible tells us that Paul and his group went to a city, Thessalonica. Here there, they sat in the synagogue with some Jews. They talked about, Paul began to preach about Jesus as the Messiah. For this is the king. And then the Jews did not like it. But here are some Jews and some Greeks. They actually converted to Paul's teachings. But then these Jews who were not happy with what he said, they started a lie that Paul was saying Jesus is greater than their emperor, their king. Now they made a riot in Thessalonica. They organized a whole riot. So Paul and, uh, Paul and the group were staying in a, a, a man called, uh, was it uh, Jason? So he was in a chase. They had to hide him. They came there and they made the riot her chasing. It took Jason, took him to the cops, and he had to pay bail. Just for the gospel. Then he, he was let go at night. Paul was you, then he was meant to go. He, he, he left. Now, it says um, uh, when he got to another city called uh, Beria, not, not the Beria, yeah, I wish it was. When he got to Beria, he found a different kind of people. People who listened to him, but compared what he said and checked it against the word. Do you get the point? We, we, we need to be listeners, but then we, we need to take data as I'm speaking. Then go home and sit around it and say, what do you think about this? How do you want to questions? Are, does, does this adhere to the word? Is this the, can I say this comes from God? Now we live in an era today, yeah, 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 yeah the prophets who are more like prophets. We're told that we live in an era of the prophets. They made so much of a mess, they damaged people so much. Because for the first time, a man would stand there and never even quote the Bible and just say, can I? And they, yes. Then they would begin to speak things which were actually not according to the word. Things which were actually even offensive to God himself. So this is what I want, to, I want us to touch on a number of these things today. So that by the time you live there, and next time you speak to a situation, find out if the situation will say, uh-uh, is it fair? No? I think it's, it's okay. Okay, let's go on. So what do you need to, 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 to note key this one? That one, our words may sometimes be influenced by the words of those who lead us. Because scarcely would a man take a word, yes, somebody he considers to be more inferior, to be inferior to themselves. So influence is always from the top to the bottom. Are you okay with that? 
When I did this one uh, video on TikTok, yeah, a Chinese old man who is actually working casting, then there's a small boy behind him. You see that? Lena is actually... <laughs> and you go like, this is influence from the top to the bottom. He thinks this is how we should walk. There's also a story, sir, Mother Crab, who was actually saying to Banabai, why is Amaya funny? So look at every other kid, but I'm straight. And then the Mother Crab, as she called the kids, they came like, walking like, yeah, nah. And she said, no, you should actually do it the way the other kids do it. But they said, Mom, Mom we are actually removal way and remove them in your home. Do you get the point? Now we have what we call influence. And that is why. Even in churches where the word is preached, influence is still important. They are the circle you keep within the church. There are people who would sit at church and the circle would actually take them out of church mode. Like literally, people would go like, yeah. Let's be honest. Do, so influence is all over and influence will always flow from the top this way so if you submit yourself to to the word of the lord let the word of the lord uh, influence you and if you are submitted to the word and the influence is from the word then you are able to check if every other word spoken by myself and everybody else adheres to the gospel and that's why some time back i said if you one day you sit here and you discover that i'm now beginning to talk nonsense run for your life if you can approach me. What's the point of sitting here and listening to something that you know? This is poisonous. It's killing me. It's actually not making me any better. But because there are circles around, people would die for the sake of belonging to a circle. Muta ashwa, 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 ashwa. Hanka to mumu kereke mokasama. Dishemisaka di kwereke kokai. Are you okay with that? So one is, our words may sometimes be influenced by the words of those who lead us. Therefore, it is very important for us to be connected to God so that we can discern his word. And the, there is no better connection to, one, reading the word, two, praying until you drop. I promise you. Read the Bible and pray until you die. If prayer is going to kill, be the first person. The type of thing that I was saying, I was going to say, I blend the old saints, I was going to say, I was going to They can only achieve that. Smooth is our old. We need to make time to be people who would take time to hear what the word of the Lord says and be able to speak to God in return. If you are in the habit of speaking to God, then the then prayer influences our language. Prayer, prayer influences our language. The more you sit there, whether you speak in tongues or the more you sit there and you pray, your language is being influenced. Your tongue is being touched by God. You can never be a praying person. Stand there and worry. You'll never find a person saying that. Somebody said, just squeeze a person. What's inside them will come out. What comes out first is what's on the inside. Many years ago, I said to you, if you really want to see somebody, whether they are with God or not, Buffet speaker says, Sinyanile Hamure Hul Urbakokotel. They're, gonna, they're definitely going to hit their finger. Then hear what comes out. What comes out is what's full inside a man. I have never heard a person hit themselves with a, with a hammer. They better bless God or Jesus. You know what they say? They say the same thing you say. Okay, those are the two things. Our words may sometimes be influenced by the words of those who lead us. So also be careful who you lead. This is where parents should not be in the habit of speaking things that are going to make the children to speak like you. Giving 
the head of the family a nickname. Bonga te baka fela ba sa mameli modimo bana le mabitso a a tsibong ke family fela. Ha hla bana ba re tshasane sa atlile. Lena ba tshe la mutsi wa tshasane. Ne re shoba mo. But where did it come from? Your five-year-old, seven-year-old, eight-year-old will never call his father Tazan. It's the mother who will call. It's from the top this way. You know those, 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 when, when, when we speak, we put words in someone else's mouth. And that is why the book of Jeremiah, it says, I have put my words in your mouth. Through this word, you will be able to do a number of things. You will speak destruction. So destruction is either positive or negative. It's negative if you destroy your own things, but it is positive when you destroy the enemy's things. So some people, they learn to sugar basin. I would never have sugar if I was your sugar basin. No, never. Enjoy for control. Never. You get the point? I gave a story, some, one of the, it's, it's a real story. So this lady who stayed in the Modi Modi flat, um, she was a Christian, she had kids, I think two or three kids, and they were struggling financially. Now, these are the people who go fire. So she would be praying out loud, oh Lord, we pray for the grace of Dimu. Praise Lord God Almighty, we don't have food. And then there was this lady, the atheist lady, the, the lady who never even believed in God next door. But now she would overhear them when the lady was praying. True story. And then she decided to take scraps of her food, the lady next door who doesn't believe in God, and put them in a plastic and put them between the flats. You know that? So on a half a one day I asked them on a plastic food. Ah, uh, yam tasama full of food. She prayed more. Lord, thank you and everything. Then, so the lady kept supplying and supplying and supplying and supplying and supplying until she started getting like good groceries. So the lady knew prayer works. The one, the praying one, but the one who was supplying was waiting for the day she would confront this one. And the confrontation took place one day in a nice manner. They greeted, and this one, the one who was hungry, began to testify to this one about the grace of God. She began to tell this one, God can do anything. And then she began to say, you know what? You know, me, my children, Dijo, what, what? We began to pray, and it was. So that one wanted to burst her bubble array. No, I put the food there. And then on about it, it means if you could hear God tell you to do that. Hear him when you say you need to be born again. They say the story of the old thing translated in the lady next door being totally transformed. Wait. So be careful where you speak, what you speak. You are never alone. This is where we say even walls have ears. Do you get the point? I, 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 I have, I, I speak a lot when I'm alone. I, I, I confess a number of things I speak. Joyce would say, why are you one No, after I spoke, I remember what I said. I would be saying, tomorrow, I want to, why are you one No, no, no. I'm, I'm making tomorrow's diary. Once I have spoken it, keep playing lazy, I will remember it. And then tomorrow I will actually do exactly that. I don't even have a PA. For that matter, I keep at the PA. The PA is going to be called about so you're high. On Tola Giro, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to know what I want to do? I want to know what I want to do. And honestly, I want to know what I want to do. I want to know what I want Oh Lord, forgive us. <laughs> so remember that. 
Now let's go to Jeremiah 23. Now the issue of people speaking into the lives of other people has always been God's concern. And that is why we normally say, do not share your problems with everybody. But faith, Yaruna, is so natural, we think after we spoke to somebody, it's better than speaking to God and keeping quiet after all. Now, between the people who hear you and God, there, there's a huge difference. God is the author of life. Be in the habit of taking your problems to God in prayer. Sit there and talk to him. The problem is we were taught to pray and never taught to talk to God. That's why every time we come to we become poetic. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. You were worshiping, you were just worshiping the Lord. Anyway, praise the Lord. But when you call your cousin, you don't like, ah, I'm pinch is cocoa in 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 on paper road. You you become direct. So in the same way, speak directly to God. When you speak directly to God, I promise you, there are so many things the Lord can do that man can never do. But each time people speak in our lives, God will be here then and judge him between what has been spoken. And now we have this one thing uh, the Bible spoke about, Matthew 24, take heed that no one deceives you, deceive us. I grew up on that. We have the, uh, Paul talking to Silas, writing Silas a letter and saying, in the last days, pe people will not stand sound doctrine. Instead, they will gather around themselves People who will say what their itching ears want to hear. Good people will go to church, but then they hear you talk and talk about, ah, yeah, yeah. I'm not here for that kind of gospel. But what like gospel hearing? Yeah, no, I can settle for this one. Then they go to, to work and they go like, it's in as if, it's in as if. That's a confession now. It's in jail, as if. Then from nowhere, I mean, but what you say? Because I remember that lesson. I wonder what can I feel about. So far, now that is influenced. And I was saying, now, if that kind of uh, teaching of gospel would reach the ears of God and be answered, if God kills your enemy, you are next. Because where now somebody else will discover the kind of prayer, and you're gonna, we're all gonna finish each other. There will never be any last man standing. So, but it says they will gather around themselves people who will teach what their itching ears want to hear. Now, if I'm going to be the kind of person who is going to use the word of the Lord, forget what your itching ears want to hear. Don't say what you would like to see happening. Say what God would like you to see happening. Be influenced by God. And that's why it goes as far as love your enemies, pray for those who despisefully use you. If a man takes your undercoat, give him the jacket as well. If one comes now, remember the washing. Okay, wrong. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going but that's, you know what? The Bible just says, just have a different outlook towards situations. The principles of God, which are influenced by the word of the Lord, expects us to act differently. But the principles of men, when we are told by a man what to do, men will tell us exactly what he wants us to do. And we're going to be like him. So there's going to be like, by 3,000, 4,000, which is, what's the point, therefore? What did you come into this world for? So in this book of Jeremiah 23, our, Jeremiah, yeah, Jeremiah 18, no, no, 23, I want us to look at it and hear it context today. People who speak into other people's lives have always been there. 
Even in Bible times, not everyone who spoke, spoke what satisfied God. They told God's people what God to disapprove. Mo 23, 16. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. I really don't listen to prophecy. There's a difference between prophecy and prophets. Prophecy. Prophet is a person. Prophecy is the word of God from a person. Now, how do you know what is being said? Or it's like, oh, my demon, one. God will speak the same thing that he spoke to somebody else. And if it's from God, it will never put a burden on your shoulders. Mudimu does not bring unto our lives prophecies that are going to bind. Prophecy was meant to liberate people. When there were troubles in the days of the Bible, in the days of the famine, they would say, let us get a prophet. I remember one, of the, one instance where they, were needed, they needed a prophet and every prophet came there. No. One man among them said, no, they're lying. Get this other prophet. I forget the name of the prophet. Go get this other prophet. The word of the Lord is with him. Then the king said, no, this prophet, he never says anything I want to hear. But then that prophet came and he said to the king, you are finished. You get the point? Today's prophets speak what they think you want to hear. I said, Mohuluna, this is the case here, demand and supply. If there's a demand, the devil will do a feasibility uh, study and everything. If there's a demand, he's going to bring supply. If you are, your appetite is to hear prophecies, you're going to get prophets. And they're going to make profit out of you. Kibana about touching anointing, ka hundred rands in That's the cheapest anointing ever. Once you go by a chalet, the more pilimola so, and the more one on to buy a beer, the more boo water, the more one of our little essentially, 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 he was telling the Israelites in those days when there were so many questions around them in the book of Jeremiah. You know what? So many questions. They were desperate to hear what God said. And as soon as they got desperate, the devil realized that they are desperation. Now, why am I bringing up the, qu the question of desperation? Now, when you are desperate, don't be in a situation where you want to hear. When you are so desperate, Miriam, fall on your knees and speak to God. Tell Mudim, I'm anxious. The Bible says, in any case, be anxious for, any, for nothing. Be anxious about nothing. But by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. When you are anxious, when there are too many questions and no answers, try to speak to God. Because in that state, the one who made you anxious will bring you a word that is not from God. So they were in a, in a state of anxiety. Things were not going well with them. The devil saw an opportunity. He raised prophets and they will, they will fill you. They will fill you with what? Come on, they will fill you with what? Come on, say it again. They'll fill you with what? False hope. There is hope and there is false hope. Hope does not make one to get tired. Hope does not make one to lose faith in God. Because substance... A faith is a substance of things we hope for. So there's proper hope when you are standing there and somebody says to you, now what are you going to do? Well, I, I know I still have hope. I may not have faith at this point, but I still have hope that the Lord will come through for me. Because I'm not going to, 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 to focus most on the results. These results, this is not how my God would have solved the matter. I, I'm, 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 I'm rejecting this whole matter. I'm hoping the Lord will bring the correct. That's hope. But a false hope is when a person creates in you what was not there. Like, I see you. 
Kubana mushupu ngikhulu. Uthe sibathi wathile mochisa nyama ili ya hawo. From today utayithola uphesi wa chisa nyama ntwana wa ngutlo. Isi utayithola umatha di butchare uthola di quotation uso batla lo lo raka di pudi tse phelang u batla da chisa nyama because that is false hope. So be careful what's been said to you. You know, wana more go wana next week utsama ka Ferrari o tla bana le false hope. False hope will divert you from where you are resting in the Lord. There is what resting in the Lord, knowing that at this point things are not going the way I want them to. But my hope is in the Lord. I stand and I hope in the Lord, and those who hope in Him will never be dismayed. One day the Lord will come through for me. Otherwise, you abandon your post where you are supposed to wait. One day, 1984-85, one American elderly preacher was asked this question, do you believe that every Christian will go to hell, uh, to heaven, or if they don't run past it? That's what he said. I I'll repeat it. This elderly preacher was do you believe every Christian will go to heaven or if they don't run past it? But what do you mean? Are people have everything else propelling them except the word of God? Are, are, could you, in other words, you are saying every Christian, according to God's will, should end up in heaven. But because of what propels them, they will run past haven't been the promises of God and everything else. But what makes us to constantly miss what God has said, there are other things which are not from God. You have a situation in your family. I see a situation in the family the family is one that is functional. But welcome to the club. I mean, you were able to hold yourself for the whole day. God tennis at an arculum and daughter, culum, culum. But above one as a mother, I naked in a corona, it is called Sepa Coviet or Hahu Tahab. And the whole day you are holding fast to your confession. The whole day you are saying, This is the last time he never comes back. This is the last time she never comes back. This is the last time. This is the last time. And then the kind of any bush, this I see so fairly anyway. Guy, half past eleven. Then you demolish, you destroy what you've been building the whole day with your confession. Because the devil says, get somebody who will make you to destroy it. Now, I, I want to be honest with you. I'm still going to make it in life. Like they say, by hook or by crook. I, I've come this far, I have seen God. He lifted me up from the deep muddy clay, planted my feet on the king's highway. And I'm not, I'm not getting off this one. I am on a boat yet, glory, glory, glory. No matter what, I don't care the storms in the sea. I'm no longer on the sand. I'm in the sea now. If I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. I am not going to get opinions, sorry, couch potatoes. You know, but if you want the best coaches, Go to the Matamadula mobile coach, but oh, you want to go to Chincha or Chincha fellow? You want to go to the fellow? You want to know who is this one? Who is the fellow? One soccer player said to me, Are you know what? Are as a penalty kick, those posts who are Dinyani? Are Marhaul the goalkeeper? You hold your goal. I, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know. I the goalkeeper corner said he did hold him. I don't know. You, you how many people hold? What about the goalkeeper? I remember when I did nyanya so they saw about the mess of the penalty. My boots are malum. Hey, malum what are you doing? Malum are ano urfela. I don't know malum. I don't know. 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 I don't So this is what the Lord Almighty says. Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. They fill, your, they fill you with false hopes. 
They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord says, you will have peace. And to all who follow their st the stubbornness of their hearts, they say, no harm will come to you. But which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord? So the prophet's reputation is necessary. A man's reputation doesn't come from his lips. Everybody's, look, some of you, your CV has got, you are not a CV. I want to look up on one thing. Your CV is east, well, now we are west. Good after about interview, but, hey man, what do you think? Maybe he brought his uncle's CV. He just copied it and put the name on. The Bible says, how many of them have stood in the counsel of the Lord to see or to hear his word? Who has listened and heard his word amongst those prophets? Let me be honest with you. When you take an orange juice bottle, a plastic whiskey squeezer, what's going to come out? Orange juice. I was going to ask you a question. This is part of aptitude test. It was a learning. Be courageous. We'll go again. When you take a plastic or orange juice, which has, which has, that's another trick. Because if you take a plastic or orange juice, we squeeze it. There must be orange juice inside. Fine. But you take a plastic, a plastic container with orange juice on the inside, you squeeze it. What's going to come out? There you go. 10 out of 10. Ishapel Matoch. You get the point? It says, how many of them have stood in the counsel of the Lord? Can you confirm or this man or this woman knows the Lord? Because even people who know the Lord can be deceived. Now, the counsel of the Lord would also mean how many of them can prove what they're saying from the word of the Lord? How many of them can the Lord trust counsel? And, 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 and take them and put them around himself and say, yeah, these people will give you the message. No, we don't. We don't care about that. On Thursday I spoke about it. That's why a 21-year-old would take a 50, 55-year-old professor in the name of religion. Imagine. I don't trust you. Any. And I trust the King James version. I trusted thee no more. So it says, but which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see or to hear his word? It also means prophecy must be according to the word. If a man says, I have a feeling, you know, this very week, the Lord is going to give you a breakthrough. Show me some word which says the Lord will stand with me. Then the, I would rather say to you, according to the word of the Lord, may it be done as you have believed. It's also prophecy. Because prophecy is that declaration. Prophecy is not necessarily that, can I prophesy or I see something. I don't have to see anything. Prophecy is propelling forth the word of the Lord. Speaking it prophetically. And that's why the Lord says, uh, the, the Bible says, the Lord God does nothing unless he first reveals it to his sons, the prophets, or reveals to his sons prophetically. So how a person is a prophet? How a person is a prophet? No. You can still speak. Uh, what I'm doing now, I am speaking the word forth, which is going to change somebody's direction. It's prophetic. Without me saying, thus saith the Lord. When we read the Lord of the Lord, God, God's word will be prophetic for as long as it is declared. Every promise of God coming from any mouth, speaking directly over somebody, is prophetic. And there are those, of course, instances where God brings a specific word. But Rona, we throw away the basic foundation of the word. We want specific words which could come from a man's mind. Now, allergic reaction. He ate too much garlic last night. 
and Haji Lek Adikua hallucinate. And the prophet said to the Baruch, what is talking about? What is talking about? Are you okay? Let's go to the next verse. I did not send this prophet, yet they have run with their message. Among the Israelites during that day, there were so many of them confusing the nation. Words spoken, which are not from God. God says, I never send them to you, Israelites, yet they have run with their message. I did not speak to them, yet they have prophesied. But if they had stood in my council, they would have proclaimed my words to my people. So rather settle for the proclamation of the word. Let us read. Then we say, Lord, as we have read your word, we trust you for the interpretation. But even as I interpret, then we are both connected to the spirit. But if they had stood in my council, they would have proclaimed my words to my people and they would have turned them from their evil. Words, some of them, they will never create greed in you. Today we've got, we've got prophecy, prophecies which can make you to go deep into debt. Prophet, this is a hono hunsa skolo pe unzano. Obatla ho tacha or to tap into the anointing. Tapping into the anointing can be very costly these nowadays. It's so disgusting, man. Mara, isn't it what you want to tap into the anointing? Huh? Yes, yes, that's what we need to tap into the anointing. Somebody stands and says, going once, going twice, three thousand rands. They start at 15, 20, what, 20,000? They share with us, look. Okay, 15, we want no courage. But if you don't have it, you can go borrow it. Ah, everybody comes. Next month, every one of you niggas owe the bank for tapping into the anointing. That's not how the anointing works. The anointing is supposed to liberate you. So if the word from the poopy doesn't liberate you, even if the a man says it's prophetic, reject it. God can never surely say, there's somebody here, you're going to die on Friday whether you repent or not. It's not possible. Repentance is God's plan for everyone. If you repent, even if you are left with three days to die, he'll divert that if you repent. God's word gives hope, gives direction, strengthens you. Are you okay with that? So we have so much to detox from as a nation. So much to detox from. Mututa ultra bofaka di benga le tsey ena sa di kenya le msadi wa hai. Ikar le maiba. Akri maiba kona ke ngwandi lo tsele moza di le tsey tsena nyana. Baba identify ya katso ana. Yena ha di kenya u di kenya lo. Ba lo faka di tapo nyana mo mo tsena mo. Ha? Ba khona hore load share hand. Ha ba se ba le wire reel. They give you amulets to put under your pillow. You're not high, you're under his pillow. Just think about it. You get the point? Now, but because that's exactly what people in desperation do. People who are desperate are prepared to listen to anything. God wants to liberate you. Let's take another um, one story here. From Numbers chapter number 22. There's a story there, more Numbers 22. So a man who was a prophet of God. His name was Balaam. The Israelites were threatening the king of Israel. Is it Moab? Balak? And Balak being a pagan wanted the services, the Balaam, a godly prophet. Now God had spoken to Balaam. About things, some foot are all. When we read the chapter, we have to say, How can I say this man, Babalam? Balak will remember a first group of people. Balam Hanatama. Balak sent more noble people. 
promising a lot of a lot of rewards after that. And then the Lord realized that Balak, Balaam, was enticed. Balaam saw the officials, high-ranking officials, representing King Balak and coming with rewards. So Balaam, in his mind, was already taken. He was going to go. Then God says to Balaam, no, if it's, if, even if you go, don't say anything unless I say it to you. Anything. You can't resist the, the delicacy, you see, the, 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 the rewards, the everything. Go, but I will speak through you. The story tells us that the way Balaam was determined, at some point the angel of the Lord stopped before him. He never saw it. The donkey saw it. Remember that? So when the donkey saw that, Balaam never saw it. He started hitting the donkey, and the donkey for the first time, God took words which he was supposed to have put in the mouth of Balaam, and he put the same words in the mouth of a donkey. And the donkey are more here now. Did I ever disobey you all my life? And the idiot doesn't even get surprised. Ha! Ukul maganjan. Where pendu and I? Or no, you haven't. Don't care. Therefore, why are you beating me like this? Because now nah, I'm seeing an angel. I'm trying to save you. You get the point. That hurnam desperation as a child of God must never drive you. To act out of character. Let's read. Balaam said to God, Balak the son of Zippor, the king of Moab, sent me this message. A people that has come out of Egypt. Oh, oh. Say, oh, oh. A people that has come out of Egypt, red flag. Don't touch. Now, Balaam should have known if they come out of Egypt, remember their prophet Moses and the things God did in Egypt to set them free. Therefore, Balaam, Balak, Hakiritan, if we are talking about that group, uh -uh, God is with them. It's called discernment. Say discernment. Now, what is discernment? Discernment is the gift of the Holy Spirit. The descending of spirits. Discernment is that in a, I, I, when I explain discernment, I've always used mothers. By 30 or 40. With babies. the next room. I don't know how kids could be crying until that bread it strikes some chord. It's called discernment. How do you know your kids cry? They are striking a note somewhere here. Maybe because of the nine months connection. Maybe. Let's use that. Now, when you're connected to God long enough, you will be able to understand the actions of God, the word of God, and what is God is most likely to do. There are references. The Bible says... What has been, what is today, has been. And what has been will always be because there's nothing new under the sun. So when Balak says to Balaam, a people out of Egypt, that's enough. That's enough. Say it is enough. A people out of Egypt, they cover the face of the land. Now come and put a curse on them for me. Uh-uh. Even if I had enough energy, I will never temp, temper with those people. Because as a person connected to God, I know how God liberated them. 
And this is exactly why you should have that kind of discernment against the brethren in the Lord. You can't go hating people randomly. You can't be cruel to people who have come out of, who have come out of Egypt. We have come out of our spiritual Egypt. A miracle was performed out of sight where you were not present. He touched me on that day and he liberated me. I'm standing here because I have come out of my Egypt. She has come out of her own Egypt. She came out of Egypt. He came out of Egypt. She came. He came. He came out. He came out. How many of you have come out of your own Egypt? There should be enough evidence to people to never tamper with your freedom. That's enough reason for you to never even speak one word against a child of God. Rather keep your peace. Balaam should have known that. He knew it. History and night saver. We was not seeing an into the first thing little nyani back then. Same size my population. News ne news ne the trend. The liberation of the Egypt Israel from Egypt is a trend. Everybody knew about it. There was a point where one king said, "Mo bona bare rekupa fela ho feta re sebe di se ha we are ha ki ba ki le ho le bona." O sebe le hore ha le ka le kgetha o dula mo another 400 years. O atse bore ba ka dula. Ena ba sa ditse mo o di mo tla ba rumela batho ba hai. Ba tletsa mehlolo mo bana ba rona ba ashwe batho ba ba sa mai hape go. A re never ha le ke ene. A re eh eh ha le ka le ke ene mo le bona spook. Reputation alone, listen, my limo dim alone. Say that's me. Come on, say that's me. Come on, say the top of your voice. Say it again until the devil hears you. The Bible calls you the apple of God's eye. Whoever touches you touches God. Balaam should have known that. But there was a price. I've always said, "Fundis e abikira." Know what? Nim funum fundis e tiamba kira. Fundis, oba fundis. Zwanla. I've always said, prophets and priests. Abana i inheritance. They live from the offerings of the others. Kings have enough food in their palaces such that the king's dog would have a better meal than a prophet or a priest. So when a king calls you as a prophet or a priest, know how to take, the Bible says when someone puts food before your, 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 your eyes on the table, put it there. Hire Skalugu to take the knife and put it to your neck because he's counting the cost. They know we don't have an inheritance. They know we live by donations. They know we eat from the basket. Therefore, if they call you, you must know there's something fishy. Balamu haibo na dwan, and the bamlere is wadu no help you wadu handsomely. Read the story. He's, nah, just come. Cast, Balaam, just curse those people. You'll be taken care of. Never mind what tender you curse about. But how na how na? Kyo na fella tender. Ible have kiri approve ile Just stand them. Curse your words are powerful. God is with you. Curse. Now, if God was the source of Balaam's prophecy, would guess God honor Balaam's curse towards his people? No. Balaam was going to render his resignation. Ka curse you. But the Lord loved him so much. Hakatala hubuat yon kire haun fuetu. Kipulu sa wen. Kiko pauru kashe kujiru zi. Kibe tonki eo bruaka. Kipulu sa wen. Mpodi melori kibe tonki eo kashe ku. Ering fella uske waya that far. Uske waya that far. There's no way the Lord can be in that evil plan. There is no way God can even suggest that to you. But he went. Let's read. 
A people that has come out of Egypt covers the face of the land. Now come and put a curse on them for me. Perhaps then I will be able to fight them and do what? The idea is fight them and do what? Drive them away. Why are Balamu? Come and just tell them to go away. Come. That all, they don't want them around. Because of what I've said. If they come there, but Bukana, but Bukana. Who? What when they came out of Egypt? The historian said it was between two and three million. Ubuga and Jubu never want to be quelled. Oh! Eh, eh. Maybe I'm a lala la for Rivig. Aye. But we're going to get them. So the idea was we don't want them around us. Now, this should give you something. God has liberated you. Some of the false prophecies around you, ways that are trying to demean you because people don't want you around them. Because they know what God can do through you. The greatest miracle he did through your life was taking out of sin. People don't believe what you could come out of sin that 2023, still live in South Africa, live for God, and still say Jesus is Lord. That's enough to, to trigger the enemies of hell against you. So whatever anybody says against you, ask come. Just stand and say, the word of the Lord has been put in my mouth. I destroy. I pull down. I refute. Isaiah 54 verse 17. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that will rise up against you in judgment or curses, you will be able to cancel it in the name of Jesus. Don't be, don't now listen, there's a thin line between what I'm saying and what they said. It is, no, it is, every time that rises up against you in judgment, you will be able to refute or to condemn. Hire you will send it back to the sender. That's the difference. It will love your enemies, but refute what they say. Send it back to sender. Kibuloi. Baburut. That's a thin line. Very thin line. I back to sender. Back to, Friday evening, we're doing back to sender. Back to sender. Oh, it's a little back to sender to your sisters and brothers. Back to sender. Back to sender. Back to sender to yena. Le papa uru tuwe zimu familing. What's a made? Back to sender to yena. Oh, that's witchcraft. Oh. That's the thin line. It says, you would just say, this is not my inheritance. You cannot curse what God has blessed. How so quatile hand the fella? O campanware, retabona or mudimuki man. That's the, the thin line between the two. You will refute it, you'll condemn it, you'll break it down according to the book of Jeremiah, chapter number one. You will uproot it, you will tear it down, you'll destroy it, you'll overthrow it. And he will build with a new confession. As a matter of fact, if they say I won't make it, I am reinforcing. I'm planting another way over my life. I shall make it. My children shall make it. Their children's children shall make it. This, as a matter of fact, this whole family shall make it. The Bible said, God said, oh, up to a thousand generations of those who love me. They will make it if Jesus tarries, after I've been in heaven 100 years, they will still be making it. Not back to sender. Back to sender, when, by doing that, you are becoming a cursor. Well, no, 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 now you're becoming, now you're joining the club, welcome to the witch club. No, I'm saying back to sender, back to sender. Never trouble on about to back to sender. Look, I'm saying it's impossible with a back to sender, back to sender, back to sender. That's witchcraft. Can't put a curse on anyone, even your worst enemy. God wants our enemies to be saved, come to repentance and to the knowledge of the truth. And they can only do that when they see how we live for God. It's a little thing. Come on, thank the Lord. Let's read. 
Next, next verse. But God said to Balaam, do not go with them. You must not put a curse on those people. Why? Come on, read the next line. Because what? Because they are blessed. Who are these people? God's people. He took them from slavery. These are types of us, the church, taken out of our own Egypt, where we were bound by alcohol, drugs, and everything else. God had mercy on us. He sent a Moses, the preacher who preached to you. He proclaimed to the scene. God says, let my people go. You came out. Therefore, the Bible says, you cannot curse that which God has blessed because you must not put a curse on them. Those people, because they are blessed. Now, you should know this. I am blessed. I'm not sure why. Every day, you should be able to stand and when things that are being said audibly, they should hear your voice on the spot. Do not let. Open up Isaiah 55 11. God's word that comes out of his mouth will never come back to him void. Void, empty. So it's going to accomplish. Now void, how does we say the word void, empty, void? The, the, the word must be spoken into some void in order to produce, to fill that void. So you're standing there, where now people are just speaking, where now you are receiving as an empty container. This family will never amount to anything. No. Maybe the person you respect them too much, go outside immediately and say, this family, for my sake, they shall make it. That's witchcraft. You keep back to send. There's a thin line. You're part of the family. If that family, if everybody in the family drops dead in one day, I tell you, nigga, you're in trouble. So they might as well leave. So you might as well begin to sustain them through the power of the word of the Lord. I promise you, you can't be saying bang trail every Sunday when or you can't be saying shwaki khut or ta khut or talabar the whole house. On an auto sale, kun kun bar bawo isu kind. Obana buloi bo sa wanghe. Eh, buloi bo sa fela wan. So, do not go with them. Do not do what. Don't go with curses. Don't go with people whose speech does not ignite the fire of God in you. Don't belong to the circles who are forever saying men are thrush or women are snakes. Or the Sizofa, high Sizofa, ANC Pelasofas Pelenia. Never, Ninam Zosala no Smuchi, Sizosala Sid, Ifanigam and Funugu Faganin. Runa, we are going to inherit the country. So start on a country. Go a country here too. I'm not going to die because you are bored with life. So you must be able to realize who you, you, the God, Bible says, do not go with them. Who are them? Those who are saying, come be in the council of the cursors. Come be in the council of those who would want to see progress, but they are cursing themselves. It's like people being in the middle of the sea in a boat, Tandy. You know, petty drills. Some toilet driller at the football of the man's engine. She's a queen, idiot. Some people are don't care. They can drill holes in the same boat, their family, family, boat, their relationship. Oh, okay, I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to talk to him. Okay. I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to talk to him. I wasn't a full night. I'm your lad. I'll funny affair. I'll funny appeal. Utole mutomo are high no. Kisibanga can go pinville. A couple of mono tonight. Or hi, hi, hi. I'm Bulali. We funa appeal. Ungu young yang yin sanje. But okay. I'm the kaya umbize near restaurant. What? Nimaliam? Never. Can't you open and get 
كتفنان عفوني عافه عفوني غير ناي ريستورانت just drilling holes in the same boat if you want to stay in that family start repairing it start 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 uprooting all those trees those trees it's just another dikin same mola so start pulling down all those altars consciously so mzalwane if you are going to pray and see results but the intercessors banale eh 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 pray until something happens but push it push it push it push it never stop until you see the end it's like it's like it's like getting stuck with petrol on the n1 somebody about somebody where's the filling station about um maybe 70 kilometers so you go like you too i'm stuck 70 kilometers away but i promise you if it's eight in the morning if you push 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 the next intersection somebody may just come for you you push until the answer comes if you're going to push all night keep pushing until light shines in the family until he comes back omar you has been ka bang ukuthi ya vela ngini phuzile imali angeke ngikhuluma ma what's up are the the truth but what the drunk man says is what the sober man wishes he could say maru ya saba are wena bo ri hurey are Are imali ni phuzile mari othi ngibona kone ngishile lapho are uhla 70 rands are bini kama uthi siphume ngale 70 nakhana fast ube buhlale ube buhla unakane uri 70 hayi asambisela phe khona sithenga amagoda i know goda samule 35 35 35 yeah when phe amagoda don't kiss that which you see uri uyahlanya umrholwa ku 1.7 uza nge 70 hamba nayo hamba yonika unyoko ke mo utlo bona ntengo uri he u kiss it u kiss it he starts earning money wisa kubani kumama akhe are angithi uwe othe nini kumama uri kanti ungizwile are bengidaki yomari ngikuzwile See that so don't curse do not go with them says the lord do not bar them do not go with them god has put his word in your mouth that word is not to curse but to bless that word is to destroy the works of the evil it is to uproot everything the devil has planted it is to pray until god brings light and this time around that light at the end of this tunnel is not an oncoming train it's an angel of the lord say something but what you say must be when you begin to say that a be ori le family is ohlangana le family is ohlangana utsho bona maswangane ori no way sorry ori by the time i reach my father's age i would be the most rich man around in the maswangane family that's prophetic that's a balam language emu di mabele mo bipilo ba you don't agree with people who are going to say into an palace ya fana ku ya beta can't this vote len it must be kantisis in the selweni woe unto him who's going to put his faith in men put all your efforts in god all your efforts in god all your efforts in god every effort ya go kunkunkun otherwise you'll be waiting for 350 every month until you die Agrus kala ta 350 ayi bo khulu ba sekwa jani muri tu chore sekara ya lata e ngikhona ilata we kubetsa ikubetsa ngikhona ikubetsa 1 point something yo ikubetsa ngikhona ba khotola ba ka jwale 2000 ha ke 2000 e ngikhona wa khehla he puto e ngikhona no wonder smile is so ke abona ba ara tuta ba tsona ba ku lekteng be ke ha o rim Aure ke thuta ba ya ke tri tau yothe mus ba jwalo ba tswana ba ba isa ko di munjalo ha uri mo muthong e ba tsaba man thaba ngo kolta 1.6 ba re na ke thuta u yothe mus ke thuta u yothe ke 1.6 ba e phushetsa ka go di muso ba re na so ngkhunu u kra tri tau yothe mus you get the point but now 
Let's go to, back to the scripture. But God said to Balaam, don't go with them. You must not put a curse on those people because they are blessed. Good, even when you're quiet, God says no curse will come upon you because you're blessed. So your word, the day you open up your mouth, you open up your mouth, you speak what God spoke. I'm not even dare to do that. I've blessed those people. The next morning, Balaam got up and said to Balak's princes, go back to your own country, for the Lord has refused to let me go with you. So the Moabite princess returned to Balak and said, Balaam refused to come with us. What did Balaam do? Come on. Balaam refused. So you must do what? You must refuse. I'm not going to go against the word of the Lord. I will never curse my worst enemy. As a matter of fact, I don't have enemies. Because what's the point of loving them? How many more love your enemies? <laughs> you have to love yourself, really. From the <laughs> you just have to love yourself. So the Moabite princess and said, Balaam refused to come with us. Come on, let's go. Then Balak sent other princes more numerous and more distinguished than the first. They came to Balaam and said, This is what son of Zippor says Do not let anything keep you from coming to me. It's a threat. God said, don't go. As if Balak was hearing. Don't let anything to keep you from coming to me. I want you to say this statement with your mouth. Say, there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. Whatever you say reaches the ends of the earth. That's why I have put my word in your mouth. I have made a prophet over nations and kingdoms. God says to Balaam, don't go. Balak says, don't let anything keep you away from me. Who does he think he is? Twenty-seven, uh, 17. Because I will reward you handsomely. Remember what I said about prophets and priests? They know as soon as they mention reward, we will prophesy the way they want. And that's why you should... Come and speak. I'll tap into the anointing. When I hope what I've been saying, get up. When I'm sorry, cast, cast, get out on one. Kenya look home. Okay, okay. Kenya look at me. In, in, in. Good. The slower you prophesy, the richer you become. When I'm over cast, over cast, out of one more. I. You can out of one hour or now. Push up, push up. Because I will reward you handsomely and do whatever you say. It's a lie. It's a lie. When a person speaks, listen. From where, people speak from where they are at, not where they want to go. I will reward you handsomely. Yes, he's a king. And do whatever you say. Since when did kings do what prophets say? Since when? Imagine how much you go around a prosecutor. Hey, Mudima wrote to where I got him root to fed it. Here, I'll fed it. I wrote on my hand. I'll fed it. I'll get away my foot. You get the point. Since when will a king say to a prophet, I will do whatever you say when God has actually sent the prophets to kings? And kings would never want to listen to the prophet until the Lord would do something. Remember the story of Saul, Samuel. Samuel said, go fight, take everything, destroy it. 
He came. Our solar man, hey, man, of, we've done everything you said. Samuelar Maru, Kuta Hula di Puri, Arai, Banna Baba Hetilas, and Onana Hardinone. Mudimu would see Billet or Dinone Juang. Before our Rumela got in, he said, Destroy everything, both the thin and the fat. Arno Banna Baba Hale Badi Head. The sad thing is, a sad thing, uh, Samuel takes a bit upon himself to say, When God says destroy, this is what he means. He does what a king was supposed to do. He ends up doing the work of Samuel. And in the beginning of the end of Saul's kingdom, the day God sent him to Saul to tell him, I've taken the kingdom away from you. Saul cries, grabs him by the cloak. Samuel Kings would go that far. So to say, I will do whatever you say, it's, a, it's, a, it's not the truth. Listen, you must have. Open a mewang wana shlo hula kirahal. Usan zubena din tum. Kutang wana Allah. Come and put a curse on these people for me. But Balaam answered then. Even if Balak gave me his palace, now you're coming right, Balaam. Filled with silver and gold, I could not do anything great or small to go beyond the command of the Lord my God. Now stay here tonight as the others did, and I will find out what else the Lord will tell me. Now he got his getting somewhere. That night God came to Balaam and said, Since these men have come to someone new, go with them, but do only. What? What I tell you, Cynthia, look at all the tough one. Say only what God says. Do only what God says. If the Spirit of the Lord says, keep quiet, keep quiet. But oh, truth, yeah, I'm sure guilty. I won't be guilty or not guilty because I said something. I'll be guilty or not guilty because I did what God said I should do. This is all. So, how we win arguments, you know, from many mothers. How do I write it because of will? Yeah. You can always talk tomorrow. But I found out from the experience. 42 years old, the last time I was in 42. I know the power of silence. You don't have always have to talk. You can always talk tomorrow. Yeah. But once you keep quiet, then the Holy Spirit comes and says, Say nothing. Is that go make some tea? That night God came to Balaam and said, Since this man have come to someone, go with them, but do only what I tell you. Let's go. Balaam got up in the morning, settled his donkey, and went with the princess of Moab. And you know the whole story. You know the story like God God. Then he went there, that's when the donkey said, I see an angel and everything else, and finally he never cursed them. The story ended up with Balaam which is obeying God. It does not matter what and how much you go through. Stick with God. Do what? Stick with God. Let me just tell you the last story. One sad story. First Samuel chapter number three. First Samuel chapter number three. In the book of Samuel, we find something. Now, here is young Samuel. You know the story how everything happens? Uh, the mother could not conceive, she struggled, she spent time at the, at the, at the, at the temple of Ishia, they went there to weep until one day the prophet Eli Armena in Umazotagirala. I'm not drunk in water, I'm pouring my heart out. Finally, 
she conceived and then gave birth to a son and called him Samuel. This is the story. Now Samuel lives with Eli. And Eli has got two sons who are so evil it's like their father is not a preacher. And this is not a rule for life. You are accepting defeat. You are accepting defeat. Are you okay? So Samuel is there in the house of Eli. Something like a mission house, a temple like, you know? Where Eli is old. And God sent Samuel there because he knew. Was it Hophni and Phineas? Hophni and Phineas were not anywhere near coming to the father ministry. Here they were actually sleeping with the women around them. They were but they were like priested in Sela Bafalazon. So God sent the young men. But now the sadness of the story is uh, Samuel Lee, Eli is this boy is young, he's a teenager basically, one of the age. One night he's sleeping. Oh, this one came. He ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the weight of the Lord was what? Scarce. Or scarce. And there were not many visions. So, not everyone was talking like in the days of Jeremiah. So when the word of the Lord went out, it was certain. This is God speaking. Because there were not too many people proclaiming. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Just imagine. Bedroom, not far from the ark of the Lord. Okay? Next verse, number four. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel. Okay, Samuel. Samuel answered, he said, here am I. And he ran to Eli and said, here am I. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here am I. You called. My son, Eli said, I did not call you, go back and lie down. Second time around. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The word. Samuel did not know the word of the Lord, but he heard the voice of the Lord. He heard the voice. He did not know the word. I don't think Bible is using these two terms just to make nice speech. The word of the Lord is that which God brings to you personally. When God speaks, you know he spoke. But then, how do you get that far? You start by heeding the voice of God. What has been proclaimed. Normally what I do, Mabe, every time I would be praying, God, let my voice be the one you will use to send forth your word. Let them, let, let them hear the voice of man proclaiming the word of the Lord. That's the danger Yahoo and the blessing at the same time. So Samuel could hear. God said Samuel, Samuel, he could hear. But God wanted to say something to him. Now, if Samuel knew the word of the Lord, he would never have ran to Eli. When I thought, now, I know it's God talking. So you need to see it under the voice of God. You need to get a guy so no black yadi. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you type song. It should be a place where you sit there and you are pumped. Remember, by the time somebody does a PhD, how much have they read? How many 
teachers and lecturers have they had? How many study groups? How many, how many theses from your, 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 your uh, uh, must, ma, ma, king, 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 masters, come in this way. How many they've done? So much. By the time we say, this man, he's a PhD in this, they have read. They can differentiate between the word and the voice and everything else. They have been there. And that's why we need to appreciate the word of God. The voice of God, rather. Because it is, how are you going to hear the voice of God? God called Samuel himself. But Samuel thought, it's Eli who's calling. But something very amazing, yeah? Didn't Samuel know Eli's voice? At hundred and something? Mutar, Samuel. I don't think and that man will say, Samuel! Maybe the voice of and that's why you need to differentiate. Or this is the Lord speaking this time, not man. This I reject what he's saying. But let's to a listener. Okay, let's go on. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord because the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. Right? The Lord called Samuel a third time, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here am I, you called me. Then Eli, Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. Now from this point, we are qua. You realize how God really, in the natural, God set up Samuel. But it was tough. Because what God would tell Samuel as a teenager, it's not what Samuel would be brave enough to go tell Eli. I can Samuel, his mentor was Eli. Eli was mentoring Samuel to know how to distinguish between voices, words, somebody is about. And the, the lecture from heaven happened that night. God called him and Eli realized that this is God. Fine, let's go on. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. If he calls you, you say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling us at the other times. Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Now, Eli took Samuel through some coaching of how to hear the Lord. Get the point? And that is why some of the secrets that God revealed to you are not for your friends. They're for your mentors. For public consumption, you need to be directed to, direct it to somebody who will be able to say to you, this is what God may be saying. And if there is no one like that, keep it until the Lord does something about it. We are bought so many of the things God speaks to us by telling them to people who are specialists that abortions, the spiritual. They'll do an abortion for free. But it's, it, you go home the same day, painless. When I just come, Let's kill what God is trying to tell you. Let's go on. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears of it tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. Just imagine. Now, God is telling Samuel, uh, Samuel the secret. That's what it's being. That familiar Eli. Or the familiar Eli. Or the has been talking so much with Eli about his sons. But now the fatherly heart of Eli. And this is where you should realize one thing. Fathers, mothers, do not let your son go away from God without you saying a word. Stand with God. You are saving this kid from standing over your grave, Allah, 40 years, 50 years from today. Stand with God. Tell your kids who never despise God. God is bigger than everyone else. Let your children know, as a parent, 
who the first fear of the Lord, they were taught, comes from your mouth. Uyeme ori, mwaha kamu, mutimu wa shompiwa. Utolo noro, hai, kiti tin, tin, sawe tango. Satan hauri tin, matimoni, banana wal tin, basala something kamu. Then he says to Samuel, Hindot, I'm not happy with your mentor. I'm about to do something that's going to make the whole of Israel. But Papa, man, I'm telling it to you. And he's a teenager. How do you go and tell that to your mentor? Let's go on. For I told him that I would judge his family for how long? Because of the sin he knew about, his sons made themselves contemptible and he failed to restrain them. Now, let's pause there for about a minute. Parents, you will never, especially Christian parents, we speak everything over a, a, everyone else's child except our own children. Especially a church. A church all the time. Fine, hey. Guinness on twenty. Marusile wana hau ko hai arak bat la kerekeng. Hakiri muhule. Kona lena kwenye kile naka kian joka mo wana baka hadi sai kerekeng. Ta mayang rata kopana after kereng. It was so sad. I felt like mo hete ni kita mo kerekeng. I kualese wana baka konte. Rakiana kona njoe sara hadi sabat la kerekeng. Ta mayang ta wana after church. Hona mutu osalamu. Ta la kerekeng kila. Satan armuna. Look who's talking. If you're ever hoping to see the redemption of your children, stand with God. Words of God must come from your lips. Tell them you can't play with God. Tell them, I carried you in my arms. I dedicated you to the Lord. And I'm expecting good results. Samuel, Eli failed to do that. A man who had so much powerful ways. Powerful ways indeed. A man God trusted with a nation. Do you know how many nations rely on us as Christians? Do you know how many generations? Do you know we're sitting here now, you have a generation that's going to grow in this church the same way you grew in the... He, he came to church early a teenager. The mother came, the father came, the whole family came. Today he's got his own son. This is a generational issue. You failed, you failed everybody behind you. Had you went and, and took drugs halfway through, your parents would have never been in this church because they were going to have to take you to rehab and worry about something else. Thank God he kept you. Let's go on. Therefore, I saw to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. The silence of a parent over Banabahaye, you will get to a point where there will be no atonement. I said right now, Dan, unredeemable. We can't live like the devil is on leave. He's still doing his part. It's the church that has forgot to do its part. The day you go to heaven and your children are in hell, they have no guilt. The Bible says, train them up in the way they should go. When they are old, they will not depart from it. That's a promise. When they are old, one day Mudimu will put a roadblock before them like he did Kapalam. He'll put a roadblock and take them back to church. They'll, go, they'll run to the nearest church. If you stand your ground, your words, your words, the first level of speaking words as a parent is in your family. Let your word be final. 
e modimo ao ra rapeleng ah que sai sa assignment ao ra rapel ao ron ka de hole night ra rapela mo e no ka se rona ah e motho ya assignment ele ke fela late o tla ithuta ho ekala ele there's time for everything and a season for every extra let us on it on rapeleng e mo thata nga le mola tsopotse molomo ke na tla rapela ara re letsa o tloletsa trompeta mo ara shuwa le se rapela Because the words is how they have to affect nations and kingdoms and here's a nation starting right in front of you one day he may become a kingdom that doesn't know god let's conclude Samuel lay down until morning then opened the doors of the house this is a teenager ne he's been trained to become a priest he wakes up old Eli is still sleeping he opens the doors of the house of the lord he was afraid to tell Eli the vision but Eli called him sure Samuel Eli said called him and said Samuel my son Samuel answered here am I what was it he said to you Eli asked do not hide it from me may god deal with you be it ever so severely if you hide from me anything he told you so samuel told him everything hiding nothing from him then eli said he is the lord let him do what is good in his own eyes and that day there was a shift a new priest was there for You, you feel me there was a shift Eli was retrenched one day you will be recalled Manulek a type of Eli one day you are going to to expire Calvin would come in in your place let not calvin came because you failed god with the family it is wrong for a boy to carry who wrong who wrong for mshimane we na nyetse mufumadi wa how me wa bona ushwe ba sokole ka me wa bona because we na ushwele it's irresponsible a boy is not supposed to or ba tle ka situation tse ba lo modimo a ba ba pusha o pusha modimo pusha tse Eli Samuel Pelo a mo pusha tsa mo position because the whole thing was collapsing and at that particular time Eli was old he had gotten to a point where his voice never carried any impact to his sons they had it long enough So what am I saying today? I'm saying to you be courageous. To stick with God. Be courageous to proclaim the word of God. I will forever ever say the same thing in appreciation of the woman who brought me up and the men who brought me up up to up to 11. But let me talk about the woman who carried the burden and who gets the credit today for me standing here he took us to a church as safara from divorce the depression took us to a church the nearest church around the corner how she got corner rona nori ne le 12 apostle e ba ne ba kena ko ho yona gale di fa ba pholoso le monna wa hai ba pholoso ka 1948 are the next church which was the church of england she wanted to know what the preacher was saying every sunday I look at the kitchen and she would say what was taught at church today re repeat ele my younger brother anke landline of a phone ele muruti are o no re raka in today you don't want to be taking your children out of masoba a what we singa buletsa ka bakala ho tsaba to release your word god has put the word in your mouth has to shape the lives of your children 
Shall we stand? Let's prepare the confession. We'll continue next week. God bless you. Come on, let us thank him. Thank him like you really want to thank him. Note this one thing, it is easier. It was the easiest thing ever for Eli to instruct Samuel. Give him the instructions. So Samuel, it's not this and that. He failed to tell that to his sons. They were the ones who were supposed to be opening up the temple until God took a barren woman, put a priest in him, and gave her, Hannah, the courage to take the boy as soon as Atwell Lalitwele. Amunke, Alumudusa Linta Temu Huluko Temple. That boy, there was not even a room for him. He slept next to the ark of the Lord. He was that close when God called. He could hear. Some of you who think you are hopeless, don't lose heart as yet. Bring the kids to church. Send them to the teenagers' church. Send them to the Sunday school. Bring them within the mother's rooms here. But never find yourself saying to your child, Let your child know for we agree on matters. Let them know we agree. Let speak your word. appoint a Samuel to tell you that your children will never be redeemed anymore. Each one of you standing here, your child, your children, your sons, your daughters are redeemable. Praise the Lord. They will be saved. They will know the Lord. They will come back to the path that you have introduced them to. They will come and worship at the same altar you brought them one day. One day, 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 God will never disappoint you. Let's just go through the confession. Come after me. My heavenly father, I come before you in the name of Jesus. Your word says, he who hides his sin will not prosper. But whoever confesses it will have mercy. Please forgive me for each time that I took your word for granted. I exalt your word over my life and everything in this world. And I commit myself to letting it become dominant in every aspect of my life. Thank you for giving me another opportunity to walk with you and honor your word and commands. I ask and receive all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us thank the Lord. Come on, bless him like you really want to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. For he's the one who forgives your sins and heals all your diseases. He redeems you even from the pit of hell itself. And he anoints you. And you are stronger than the unicorn. The strength. Unending strength. Lord, bless you and keep you. And God, make his face to shine upon you and give you grace. Come on, bless the Lord. Hallelujah.